Bridges have brought people together for thousands of years. They've challenged us as engineers, created trade routes between countries, and have allowed us to conquer some of Earth's most difficult landscapes, like mountains, ravines, rivers and lakes. But what about oceans? Could we build bridges between continents? Where would we build them? And how would they work? This is What If, and here's what would happen if we built bridges between continents. The desire to get from one place to another has been with us for a long time. In Mycenae, Greece, ancient remnants of bridges have been found dating back to 1600 BCE. We've built bridges in many different shapes and sizes. Some of them are considered works of art. In northern India, villagers have even built living bridges using tree roots. Yet for a while, Earth didn't need bridges at all. It was one giant landmass called Pangaea. But over time, Earth's tectonic plates began to shift, and Pangaea split into chunks, forming the continents we know today. With so many land masses separated from each other, bridges became a necessity. The desire to connect to each other has pushed us forward technologically, demonstrating our incredible ingenuity as engineers. Many ancient bridges are still in use today, such as the Melish River Bridge in Izmir, Turkey, which is nearly 2,900 years old. But if we were going to build bridges between continents, where would we build them? From New York to London? From Sydney to Singapore? Or what about a bridge between Russia and Alaska over the Bering Strait? Could we possibly build a bridge between continents? And if so, what would it take to build it? There are so many different types of bridges we could build to connect two continents. But with so many important shipping routes by sea, we'd have to allow boats to pass underneath. We'd probably want to build a railway as well to maximize the usefulness of such long bridges. This could be beside a road or below it. The bridge would need a huge number of supports to withstand the weight of thousands of vehicles. If we were to say, build a bridge between San Francisco and Yokohama, Japan, some of the supports would have to be built as deep as 5,000 meters to sit on the ocean floor. The bridge itself would have to be 8,292 kilometers long. To put things in perspective, California's Golden Gate Bridge between San Francisco and Sausalito, which is just 1,284 meters long, took 1 million tons of concrete just to build the anchorages, the massive blocks that grip the bridge's supporting cables. It took 130,000 kilometers of galvanized steel for the support cables. To build a bridge between Japan and California would be 6,478 times longer and almost 33 times deeper than the Golden Gate Bridge. If we used the same bridge design to get to Japan, we'd be looking at roughly 488 billion kilograms of steel just for the support cables. Okay, so we've done some of the math. Maybe a bridge between the United States and Japan isn't the best option. But a bridge between Russia and Alaska over the Bering Strait might be technically feasible. Some people have suggested building an intercontinental railway for $100 billion that would include a 95-kilometer tunnel under the Bering Strait to connect Russia and Alaska. Even if they could raise the money, we'd have to consider factors such as the environmental impact and even politics. But if they changed the plan to building over the Bering Strait, workers might need to be stationed on oil rigs along the way, and construction could be affected by dangerous weather. The construction could also affect the ecosystem in the ocean. And once the bridge was built, there wouldn't really be enough traffic to make it worthwhile. But what if we built a longer bridge over an ocean? The longest bridge we've ever built is China's Danyang Kunshan Grand Bridge, spanning 164.8 kilometers. That's a small distance compared to going over an ocean. We would need a weather alert system in place to monitor storms and protocols to protect travelers from sudden changes in the weather. We might need to build a covered bridge to protect vehicles from extreme winds. And in order to keep this bridge operational, there would likely be a steep fee to use it. And what would the trip be like? 
Due to the huge distance, we'd need gas stations, rest stops, hotels, garages, hospitals, even police stations. And unlike a typical road trip, you'd get pretty bored by the scenery, which would be kilometers upon kilometers of concrete and water. Don't expect any fun landmarks along the way, although you might see a whale or two. We even thought of building a chain of bridges from Northern Territory, Australia, through various islands to Singapore. However, with the majority of the Australian population living in the south, most Australians would likely prefer to fly instead of the long drive to the north. This series of bridges would also be incredibly expensive to build and require a huge amount of people, resources and time. You can just imagine the fees to drive across one of these incredibly long bridges, plus the cost of gas and meals and hotels. The long and short of it is that we probably won't be building bridges across our oceans. However, it might be a possibility if we lived on a tiny planet. But that's a story for another What If.